Hi all, and welcome to Art Life. I'm Mrs. B, and in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create this gorgeous, colorful, patterned birdhouse. Have a look. I'm going to take you through step by step. You don't need to have any painting experience and can be a complete beginner. I'll let you know what you need to gather in the way of materials and I'll talk to you about patterns and some inspiration for this artwork we're going to start together. So let's get started. So let me introduce you to an artist named Deb McNorton. Now, she is an excellent local artist from Melbourne, and she is just exceptional in creating colourful, vibrant, joyful artwork using pattern. Now, she has nailed the way that she can combine colour and lines and patterns together to create really interesting artworks. I've added a link to her Instagram down below in the description. So please check her out and have a look at all the beautiful artwork she creates. So we're going to use her style as an influence for our artwork today. Here are some things that you'll need for this task. Now I do have a list of materials below in the description that you can get for yourself. There you'll find a really great set of acrylic paint. I think it's a pack of about 60 little tubes, which is awesome because it means you don't have to do any mixing and you have all the colors right there. But for this task, really, you only need a handful of different colors that you think work really well together. You'll also need a large brush and a small brush for the little details. And for this task, I'm actually painting a birdhouse. Now I got this from Kmart for about $6, but you don't have to paint a birdhouse. Really, you could paint anything you want from a piece of paper to a cardboard box that you want to decorate. Now, before we get started on our task today, we need to have a bit of a chat about patterns. Now, I'm not talking about patterns that are repetitive, like triangle, circle, triangle, circle, triangle, circle. I'm talking about the type of patterns that you find in artworks. Now have a look around you and consider the type of patterns that you might see in everyday life. Can you see a pattern in your animal's fur? Patterns are actually all around us and they're created with things like lines and shapes and colors. I'm gonna demonstrate a few examples of patterns just with my textures here. Something we could do is some straight lines, parallel, they look great. You could even cross over the top and create sort of a cross hatching pattern there. You could use circles or spots, different size ones. You could use circles in a different way. For example, you might do a small circle and then a bigger circle around it. Kind of looks like a donut. This look great, looks great if you introduce different colors as well, like this. So really pattern is just exploring the art elements of shape, color, and line to make interesting objects, I guess. You could just use lines like this. Have a think about different patterns that you could create and have a play first before you get into your actual artwork. It's going to be really important for you to have some ideas up your sleeve when it comes to painting today. Now we have an idea of what patterns are. We need to have a go and I'd love to demonstrate how to actually create patterns with paint before we start on our good coffee. Now, the main thing with creating pattern with paint is a lot of times people want to go for the detail first. For example, you want to do the beautiful spots like this. And then later start to consider, oh, now I need to put a color behind it. And then a lot of the time that ends up really gross and mixing because I'm trying to get color behind these spots that I've done and I end up just mixing it up. So 
a strategy that you could do instead is actually make sure you paint a bit of a base coat, paint the color you want in your background first. All right, I'm gonna do spots over the top of this after it dries. So make sure you let this dry completely. I'm gonna paint a few sections with colors to demonstrate how to do some different types of patterns. Paint my backgrounds first. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry completely. So it will take a little while. You could use a hairdryer if you're a bit impatient with it. Uh, our background is completely dry. We can now go in with a smaller brush, a really thin one, to add in some details with other colors. So at the moment, there's no pattern, but what we're gonna do is use some contrasting colors or some nice bright colors over the top and have a go at making some patterns out of these backgrounds. So notice so far I've done some stripy lines, some little detailed plus signs, and you can even do some big lines over the top. You do need to really concentrate and try and make sure this is as neat as possible because there's not a lot of room for error. make things work together. If you make a mistake, you kind of just have to turn it into something you meant to do. Pretend it was on purpose. Little spots there. So really, you're just concentrating your attention on some different lines that you can do, like these, some different shapes. And putting them together just makes beautiful patterns. So if you wanna do a bit of a practice page like what I'm doing before you get on with your good copy, that's recommended, but if you feel confident enough to just go straight ahead, you can. There we go, that's enough for now. We're gonna to get to our good copy now. So now we're ready for our good copy. As I said, I'm gonna paint this birdhouse in the Deg McNaughton kind of style. But if you don't have a birdhouse or you'd prefer to paint something else, that's absolutely fine. So the first thing we're gonna do is just section nice large kind of shapes, just with a pencil really lightly to give yourself an idea of where you want each color to go. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it should just give yourself a bit of a indication of where you're gonna paint each color. It's time to create a base layer or your background color for your artwork. Now choose really bright colors, beautiful blues or really awesome yellows. I love these types of colors. I'm just gonna go in and use my gray layered lines here to indicate where I'm just gonna paint my background color. When you're painting, try to paint sort of in the same direction. Can you see how I'm just going in the one direction like this rather than all over the place? It'll just dry a lot neater. And try to not apply the paint too thickly. We don't want bumps and things like that. We want it to be nice and flat and smooth. Getting these edges really smooth is quite important for making your artwork look really neat. Now notice the brush I'm using is fairly thick. 
because we are painting large sections, large areas, so you don't want to spend a long time with a small brush. But you also don't want it to be too big that you are lacking control. You want to be able to control where the paint goes. Now these edges where the two colours meet are really important to get nice and clean. So really work slowly and carefully with those sections. Oh, you really don't want the colours to mix. Can you see how it's mixed just there? That's not ideal. So even if you have to wait for each section to dry, that is better. Now I've used pre-mixed acrylic paint, but if you would like me to show you how to actually mix these colors using the primary colors, please uh, write in the comments below and um, I'll get that episode to you as soon as I can. I'm just doing the top of the birdhouse now. And I wanted to mention, just try to be fairly creative with the shapes that you are making for your base colors. It'll really make a difference if you sort of mix it up. Feel free to leave some of the sections bare too. I'm gonna to start to leave some just wooden because I think that looks quite nice as well. task of this size really takes quite a lot of patience because there's a lot to do and especially doing a birdhouse there are four sides plus two sides to the roof plus the ground so try to enjoy it and hopefully it can be nice and relaxing for you I'll put a link down below where to get this particular birdhouse um, online at Kmart for the Australian viewers. Just so you know, the colours that I have used are this sort of saffrony browny orange. I've also used a sky blue. I've got a really light, beautiful turquoise here, which is really beautiful and, and pastel. I've also got a fluoro pink and a fluoro yellow. And I've put in a few darker colours like a dark blue and a royal blue as well to add some contrast. I'll definitely be adding some white later as well. Okay, so I think I am done with my base layer for my artwork. Notice I've mixed up the shapes quite a lot, overlapped some of them, left some areas bare, but we're not quite finished yet. So the next thing that I'm going to do now that my base layer is all dry on my birdhouse, I'm going to use some gestured large kind of lines over the top. Notice I'm using sort of a medium brush, being really fine and going straight over the top. It's a bit scary because if you make a mistake, you sort of just have to go with it but I would use some time just to add in some nice big kind of exciting lines like this directly over the top of what you've painted first. And then we'll work on some details later. Building up the layers and adding detail as I go. If you've made any mistakes with the first stage or the first layer, 
this is when you can sort of go in and hide them or fix them up a little bit. So I have finished with my second step and that is adding some gestured lines, bigger kind of shapes over the top of my background layers. I'm going to let that dry for a little bit, pretty much is dry. I'm going to go in and fill in these spots with some finer details. Now I'm going to offer you a bit of a, a cheat to this task. If all your paint is completely dry, you could probably actually go in and do these finer details with a texture or some sort of colored Sharpie. That's gonna be able to um, be a lot sort of neater, I suppose, when you're doing these fine edges. It's really quite tricky to do with a paintbrush. So if you wanna do that, um, it's cheeky, but it's definitely doable. So here I am going in with paint now to add some finer details. This is time consuming, but looks awesome at the end. So I really recommend spending some time. So notice what I've started to do is add in some um, details here. It's good to bring the details out from the background so you don't have to stay within the colored background. You can bring it out like what I've done here. It kind of makes the whole thing connect together. You can mix up the colors to continue the pattern but change up the color. Looks great. Okay, I think I'm done. I could have just sat and painted for hours and hours and hours and just added even more detail. But I think this product is pretty awesome and I think the birdies will love it. And it adds a bit of a pop of color to my garden. Now remember, you can create an artwork like this just on paper or a canvas, and anyone can do this. It's a matter of doing three layers, the bottom color, then some more gestured larger lines over the top, and then some really uh, detailed small bits and pieces over the top of that. So it does take some time, but I hope you uh, see it through, and please make sure you give me some examples of what you've been up to in the comments below. I'd love to see what you have created. So it's as simple as that. I really hope that you enjoy creating your very own pattern bird house in the Deb McNaughton style. It is a very time consuming task and you do need a lot of patience. So I hope you see it through to create a really detailed, exciting bird house that you can put outside. Please make sure that you subscribe to the Art Life YouTube channel like this page and also comment below with any photos of the artworks you've created today. See you next time.